Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are gonna be talking about six of my favorite artists and designers as of recently. I've been wanting to do this video because I just have like a list in my head of designers that I really like and I need to like get it out into the world or else I feel like I'll forget them all. These people that I'm gonna be talking about today are from all types of different areas of design. So not just graphic design. Um, I also have some like illustrators, type designers, YouTubers, and animators. If you stay till the end, hopefully you'll find at least one person that you can follow and um, check out some of their work because all these people are really cool. So the first person that I'm gonna be talking about is an illustrator. Her name is Jessica Hish and she actually came to SCAD um, in the spring to do like a little presentation. So I got to go to that at the SCAD graphic design conference. I went into it not knowing anything about her but I really loved all of her work. So she's a lettering artist so basically all of the illustration that she does is in the realm of lettering which like I feel like I learned a lot about lettering when she did her presentation. I love typography but for some reason like illustrated lettering has always been I'm not gonna say like I don't like it but for some reason I had like something in my brain telling me not to do it because I think as a kid I always would get like lettering books as gifts and I would never use them so maybe that's why like I literally am looking right now at a pile of like lettering books that I've had <laughs> in my bookshelf forever that I never use but it was really cool learning about lettering from her when she visited SCAD she had just published a new children's book called Who Will You Be and she has published a few children's books in the past and I love children's books and that's one of my goals one day is to illustrate a children's book and to write one because I've just always loved that type of thing. This book is so good. First off, it's the colors are so pretty. It's an interesting plot. It's about um, letter children that are on a field trip and they go to different places around New York City and learn about like how letters can work in different ways. I could tell that this was written by a graphic designer because she just like had little jokes and stuff in there that graphic designers love. In her presentation she talked about how she used both Illustrator and Procreate and kind of like switched between them um, to make all of her designs. She also has done lettering for like titles of movies. So she did Moonrise Kingdom and the most recent movie that came out that she did was Hey God, Are You There? It's Me, Margaret. She's also done some logos like uh, she redesigned the Jenny's Ice Cream logo, which is a really good ice cream place. And when I found that out, I was like so excited. Um, she redesigned like the MailChimp and Eventbrite logos and they're all very cursive and cool. So yeah, I just learned a lot about lettering from her, especially like places like movies and children's books, it can be used a lot, like the more illustrative lettering style. So number two, this is my current favorite YouTuber. All of his videos are just so good. His channel name is Struthless, but his actual name is Campbell Walker. Um, he's an illustrator. He does, I don't know what he does illustrations for actually. I mean, a lot of his own personal stuff. He has a book and then he also probably does commissions for illustration. His YouTube channel is so good. It's not just about illustration. It's actually more about like creativity and productivity, which are like two things that I want my channel to be about. So I'm really interested in watching videos like that. He's just a really good storyteller. He can take a video like this, like what I'm doing right now, but turn it more into a story. So one of my favorite videos that he's done is, um, I'll put it in the description, all these artists and their websites and stuff will be in the description for you to check out. So he, he kind of was like burnt out from his current video style. So he started doing challenges where he would challenge himself to do something like totally outside of his realm. So in one video, he tried to run a marathon without any training. First off, it was such a good video and I, I love videos like that, like challenge videos. I, I recommend watching the video because I, I don't want to spoil it because it's like one of the best YouTube videos I've ever seen. Another thing is that he puts a lot of little like interesting things that you can take away and like use in your own life. So he'll just give like very specific little stories from his own life and I, I always come out of watching one of his videos with like something new that I've learned but also I'm entertained like it's just perfect you should go watch his YouTube channel number three is Christian Vargas his um, brand or his studio is called Typazon he's actually a professor at SCAD not not an on-ground professor but he teaches some online typography classes um, I've never taken his class but he was one of the other people that did a presentation at the 
graphic design festival this year. He is like mainly a typographer. So he talked about how he created this typeface called Salvaje. And he basically went through the whole story of how he planned out this typeface. It took him like three years to actually design, um, which I thought was crazy. It was good that I learned that because I don't know, I feel like sometimes I try to rush projects, but I learned that like you can take your time on something if it's like that big of a project. One thing I love about typographers, and I'll get into this later in the video when I talk about another one, is something you don't realize is that a lot of them take inspiration from like different things. They don't just sit down and like start drawing a, a random letter. They put like inspiration from the outside world into it. So his typeface Salvaje is inspired by Birds of Paradise. He wanted his typeface to be like kind of dynamic and then he also designed a second font within the same typeface um, that's like the more basic I think sans serif that's not as creative so that you can pair the two together. It was also funny because he talked about how once you like put a typeface out into the world, you don't know who's gonna use it. So he said that like sometimes he's just walking around town and he'll see his typeface used in different places, which I think is so cool. And a really funny thing that happened was after I got back from this presentation, I was like checking my email that later that night, I got like a, an email from Princess Polly for like some discount thing. I need to delete all these things from my inbox because I keep getting like all these junk emails but the like banner at the top of the email had his typeface so i thought that was so cool he's also done stuff for oatly and also like just his website the website in general for the type is on studio is so cool in my notes looks with everything for this video i said website in general is omg <laughs> because it is like there's all of these cool graphics that he uses to display the information in like a way cooler way than just text and I feel like if I had all the time in the world I would totally do that but I'm just partly lazy and partly don't have time for that so maybe one day. Artiste number four is Sean Pecknold. I've talked about him in my answering questions by chat GPT video that I did back in January but I wanted to talk about him more because he's like one of my favorites and he's so cool. He's the older brother of Robin Pecknold from Fleet Foxes, which is one of my favorite bands. Um, I just saw them in concert last week. They were so good. He is an animator and he does all of the music videos for Fleet Foxes and they're just like the coolest thing ever. Like, like when I saw these for the first time, my mind was just blown. All of his animation is handmade. So it's either claymation or like paper puppets and but it looks so the claymation obviously looks like claymation because like you can always tell when it's claymation and i love claymation i just got i just got really weird deja vu i feel like everything that just happened happened before okay moving on um okay so one of the earliest music videos that he did um is the music video for white winter hymnal which is like Fleet Fox's most popular song, so you've probably heard that one, or at least the Pentatonix cover of it. But in this music video, I first off, go watch all the music videos. Like, don't just rely on me. Go watch it yourself. In this music video, it's like claymation style, and it's these old men like sitting around a campfire or something like that. And then there's this old man that has like a spinning wheel, and he like reverses the time, and then like all the men de-age and then they're like young again and then like the old man lets go of the wheel and it spins back and then it's like a time lapse of them getting older and it's so cool like claymation just like overwhelms me because i don't even like i don't even want to think about it it's just like so complicated he also did music videos for i mean he's done all the music videos for fleet foxes but my two favorites are for featherweight and the shrine fashion argument and these are both a similar style. They're both using paper puppets, but they literally look like they're illustrated. When I first saw Featherweight, I thought it was just animated on a, a software. And then a few months later, I found out that it was paper puppets. And I was like, both of these music videos are kind of similar because they're both about an animal trying to like reach a goal. Again, like the storytelling is just so good. The Shrine Slash and Argument is one of my f favorite Fleet Foxes songs, but it's about this like, deer thing that goes through this journey through this like dark world and like it doesn't even necessarily have to do with the song at all but i just love how it 
it tells like a whole story. I was looking at his website and he's actually done some things for Netflix and like random intros for stuff. Um, but yeah, he's definitely one of my favorites, my favorite animator. And I just love music videos, um, but I love when music videos are like really well done. Person number five is Jonathan Heffler. He was, I think that's how you pronounce his last name. He was in an episode of Abstract, the like design show on Netflix. I've been watching that recently. The two graphic design episodes are the best. The other ones are good, but like I'm kind of biased. He is also a type designer and he does like a similar thing as Christian Vargas where he uses like outside inspiration and he doesn't just like stay in the box. I would watch this full episode on Netflix to like really find out more because this was like such a good episode. Um, but in this show, he's basically going around and doing research for a new typeface that he is planning to make based on like watch typefaces. So the typeface he designed is called Decimal. And he would go around and like use microscopes to like look at all the little letters on a, on a watch and clocks and stuff. And then he tried to combine it all into like one singular typeface that kind of represents it overall. Another cool little thing that he talked about in the episode was um, he was really interested in designing manicules, which are like the little things of like a hand pointing in old like newspapers and designs and stuff. And I kind of like was doing stuff with manicules in this past quarter. Um, I did a little design for a project that I had and I, I had to make a design in the style of like the Dada artists and they used manicules a lot. But in this episode of Abstract, Jonathan was talking about like how he would take a manicule and then abstract it so much to where it, it wasn't even a hand anymore, but it was like just a cool symbol. And I think that's so cool. Like, I don't know how his brain works, but I want mine to work like that. The last artist that I have for you today is named Kel Lauren. They are a graphic designer. I used to watch them a lot on YouTube, but they haven't really been posting much recently, but they do a lot of stuff in the music industry. So a lot of merch, I don't know if they've done any album covers, but like posters and they actually li like license their work to singers and bands and stuff. So like they did this shirt for Billie Eilish that actually went up on her website. Another big one that I had seen a lot is they did like the tour date poster for Curtis Connors tour. They've also done stuff for um, Mod La Tour Super Organism, the 1975. But my favorite thing about Kel Lauren's work is that it's like very expressive and I'm like not much of an expressive designer and I kind of wish I was more. I think I can be. Like I think I could if I really tried or I guess like the point is that to be expressive like you shouldn't try as hard, which is hard because I feel like I try too hard sometimes. But I just love all the colors and it seems to like combine a lot of different design styles so it's just very different and unique and also they're pretty inspiring to me because i just love music so i really want to like maybe go in the route of like designing stuff for the music industry i don't even know how you like get into that um i guess we'll find out <laughs> so yeah those are my six designers that i have been really inspired by recently let me know who your favorite is in the comments and also comment some of your favorite artists because I'm always look looking for more people to follow on Instagram to check out their work. If you're interested in any of the people that I talked about, um, check out the description and I'll have, you know, all their websites and work and stuff like that. Be sure to check out some of my more recent videos. I've been uploading every Wednesday, um, finally. I've, I took a kind of the whole year, honestly, the whole past year not really very active on YouTube, but I'm officially back and I have some really fun videos planned. So stay tuned for next Wednesday. Go check out my weekly podcast with Enzo Antonio. It's called Telepathy and we post every Tuesday and talk about just random stuff, but it's very entertaining. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next Wednesday with a brand new video. Bye guys.